be radically obedient. That is complete surrender. Some of you guys are just being mediocre obedient, meaning you're doing some of the work so you won't have the guilt of doing none of the work, but you're not doing enough of the work for it to to make significant strides towards the goal. Let's get out of this gray. It's the gray areas that's killing us. Not that bad as a gray area that's living your life in the middle. Like, why would you settle for not that bad? Why would you let good become the enemy of your great? Like, why would you settle for a relationship that doesn't like make you extremely happy like through the moon? Did you know you can be blissful in a friendship? You can be blissful in a relationship. You can be blissful in a marriage. You can be blissful in your career. You can be blissful in your relationship with God. Like, you can be blissful. Like, why y'all settling for good enough? Like, why y'all settling? Like, your health can be optimal. Like, it, it doesn't have to be like, well, at least I'm only on one medication. Like, why are you settling for gray? when great is available to you? Like, why are you selling for good when great is obtainable? Like it's reachable, like it's accessible. Like, no, get out of your own way and do the work that you're avoiding. Get out of your own way and do the work that you're avoiding. Don't let your good become the enemy of your great. And don't let your circumstances become unbearable because you are so in love with disobedience. Optimal health is not a privilege, it's a right. However, unfortunately, the overwhelming majority of health challenges today can be attributed to lifestyle. This includes our physical activity, the quality of our relationships, stress, purpose and fulfillment, and of course, our diet. But what if there was an alternative? What if we could prevent and combat these health challenges with lifestyle changes before pills and procedures? You are listening to the Plant Protocol Podcast with yours truly, plant-based health and business coach, and now the forever voice in your head, Lisa A. Smith. It's time to come get this health. Y'all, so I got a message from a young lady several months ago. She slid in my DMs. I guess she has saw a clip from me or she has saw a video or something. And she was like, I actually met you a couple years ago. She said, I met you a couple years ago and you were actually introduced to me through a friend and she named the friend and the friend was a, a client of mine. And she said, I met you a couple years ago through so-and-so. And at that time, I thought I was ready, but I wasn't, you know, I know I needed help, help at my health at that time and I wasn't ready. And I listened to you and I learned all about you and I've been kind of following you ever since. And when I met you a couple of years ago, I, I wasn't ready, but I really need help now. She slid in my DMs and she said, I'm ready now. Not only am I ready now, I'm over ready. She said, this is going wrong. My blood pressure, my weight has gotten even worse. I'm not feeling good. I just came from the doctor. I'm having these issues. They're taking tests. And she's like, it's time. And I cannot tell you how many times I have had people come to me and say that. I've been following you for a while. You know, I've been going back and forth with this thing and I wasn't ready before, but I don't even know if I'm ready now. I just have to do something now. Essentially, what she was saying, guys, is I've reached a point of no return. I've reached a point where my situation has become so dire that I have to do something immediately. She has reached a breaking point. And if she didn't change something now, things were going to get exponentially worse. Her circumstances were going to get exponentially worse. I want to talk about obedience today. You guys know that's one of my favorite topics. I believe I'm the author of Radical Obedience. I know I'm the soon to be author of the book Radical Obedience, but I personally have never heard anyone else talk about Radical Obedience. So I'm just going to own that language, okay? And the reason I'm telling you guys this story about this lady who came to me years after meeting me and telling me, okay, Lisa, my back is to the wall and I have to do something. The reason I'm telling you guys this story is because over and over again in my career as a coach, I have watched individuals suffer and have to deal with the consequences of disobedience. Now, if you guys are fairly new to me, if you never heard me talk about radical obedience before, then let me define it for you. I define radical obedience 
as complete surrender. Radical equals complete. Obedience equals surrender. Complete surrender to one's calling or assignment in that season of life, despite the presence of fear and uncertainty. So that is how I define radical obedience. Now, one of the conversations we've been having with our students in my plant-based coaching program Farm the Table for the past couple of weeks is about obedience. Obedience to the things that they feel called to do in this season of their life. And I had to tell one of our students yesterday that delayed obedience is still disobedience. So you would get around to it eventually, but you delay it for weeks, months, sometimes even years for a variety of reasons. Delayed obedience is still disobedience. Radical obedience is complete surrender, right? And so you have disobedience, you have delayed obedience, you have obedience, and then you have radical obedience. And we should all be shooting for, gunning for radical obedience. But let me share something with you guys today. And this is very, very important because one of the things that people tend to fear is what happens if they take a chance on themselves? Like, what happens if I spend this money on myself? What happens if I invest in myself? What happens if I put myself out there? What happens if I put my face out there, my voice out there? What happens if I give up meat? I don't know. All I know is how to eat animal products. When something is new to some people, it overwhelms them so much. The unknown overwhelms them so much. The fear of the unknown overwhelms them so much that it causes them not to take action. And I remember doing a podcast episode last year that said, Going plant-based is not hard. What's really hard are the consequences of disobedience. Like starting a business is not hard. What's really hard is the consequences of disobedience. Writing a book is not hard. What's really hard is the consequences of disobedience. Like leaving that relationship or that long-term marriage and going back to single dumb again and asking the streets to invite you back is not hard. What's really hard It's the consequences of disobedience. What I want people to understand is that what you think is hard and challenging and overwhelming and scary is doing the thing. It's going to the gym for the first time in 10 years and being completely out of shape and deconditioned and embarrassed in front of that equipment. That's what you think is hard. Going to the class where everybody seems like they fit and you out of breath in the first five minutes. That's what you think is hard. Giving up chicken and turkey and fish and and shrimp (laughs) and eggs and cheese, even though that stuff makes your stomach hurt and and it's causing your blood pressure and cholesterol to go up. You think that's hard. That's not hard. Your issue is you have no idea what hard really is until you are faced with the consequences of disobedience. The thing that we should be shaking in our boots about It's not being new at creating content on social media. It's not being new at putting out your first podcast episode. It's not being new at speaking and stepping on the stage for the first time. The thing you should be shaking in your boots about, the thing that should scare you into submission is the consequences of disobedience. I can't even believe that you guys think starting a business and telling people you know, that you have this business and creating an offer is going to be the scariest thing you've ever done. And I'm not minimizing the fear. Trust me, I get it. These things can be extremely scary. But what I'm here to tell you is that there's something that's 10 times scarier. There's something that's 10 times scarier than launching that project. It is the consequences of disobedience. The title of today's episode is the number one sign that you've been disobedient for a very long time. The number one signal that you've been disobedient for a very long time. I'm going to tell you what it is. It is exactly what that young lady was dealing with when she DM'd me last year and said, I met you years ago. I didn't pull the trigger on working with you then, but now I'm at a place where I have to work with you. The number one sign that you've been disobedient for far too long is unbearable. When your circumstances have become so unbearable that you no longer have the option to do something different, you now have to do something different. When your health has gotten so out of control because you've been disobedient for so long, like your body and your mind gave you a signal months ago that you were not optimal, but you kept on pushing. You kept on putting off those workouts. You kept on not drinking the water. You kept on not eating the fruits and vegetables. You decided to just eat smaller amounts of the chips and the junk food and the fast food. Like you saw the weight creeping up 
but you refuse to be disciplined because you refuse to believe that you had to let it all go in order to reach your goals. You decided to live a life of moderation and now the weight is out of control. The blood pressure, out of, the cholesterol out of control. Your fibroids are just growing. The painful periods getting worse. The hormonal issues, your skin breaking out. You're losing your edges. All of this stuff is happening. Why? It's becoming unbearable. Why? Because you've been disobedient for so long. Listen to me very carefully. Nothing starts off at a 10. You just ignored it when it was at a two. The number one sign that you have been disobedient for so long is that your circumstances have become unbearable. Nothing starts off at a raging alarm. Your body gave you You was a green and then it gave you a mild green and then it started turning into yellow. Then it started turning into orange and then you was just disobedient, disobedient day after day, week after week, year after year. You still at that job. You knew you, you knew you had outgrown the job a year ago, but you refused to pull the trigger on the exit strategy. You refused to apply for something new. You refused to write the resignation letter. You refuse to start the true project, the passion project that's been in your heart for years. So, so now you look up a year later and what happened? You physically get sick when you got to go into the job. It causes physical anxiety or depression in anticipation of going back to the job. You just refuse. You refuse to be obedient. The number one sign of disobedience, of prolonged disobedience is unbearable. If you have reached a place in your work, if you have reached a place in your health, if you have reached a place in your relationship, if you have reached a place in your faith, if you have reached a place in your finances where things have become unbearable, I'm here to tell you, you are a front row student. You are an A plus student in disobedience. You are an A plus student in disobedience. So what happened when that young lady DM'd me She was coming to me saying, she was like, I just left the doctor. They're telling me they're about to put me on all these meds, Lisa. They're they're telling me that I I might have to get something with her heart done. So now we're talking surgery. We're talking procedures. We're talking pills, powders, potions, and procedures. If you get to that point in your health, honey, because you didn't start there. Where you started, you could have just changed your diet and fixed that thing in a couple of weeks. Where you started, you could have picked back up your workout regimen and had them a couple pounds off. Where you started, You could have went into your boss's office the moment you felt the unfulfillment creeping on your spirit and did something about it. But your disobedience led you to a place of unbearability. Is that a word? Y'all going to act like it is today. Y'all know I'm a wordsmith. Let's just play along, okay? It's now unbearable. I have watched people over and over and over again come into our programs, come into our business accelerator, and they're like, how quickly can I make money? I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You know, starting a business takes time. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Like you got to build up your credibility. Do you already have an audience that's ready to buy from you? No. Okay, well, we got to position you as authority first. We got to get you some credibility with your prospects first. Like we got to create an offer first. How long is this going to take? Like, can I be making money within two months? Why? Because my job is so unbearable. I got to go. Oh, so let me get this straight. You've been disobedient for years in your life. And now you come into my program trying to put pressure on me to get you results in an unreasonable amount of time. Oh, okay. (laughs) How long is this going to take? Well, how often are you going to work? Like, what do you mean? You know what I'm saying? So listen, guys, the number one sign of disobedience, if you're not sure, you know, because when I talk about obedience, I inevitably always get people raise their hand and say, how do I know if I'm being, like, I feel like I might be being obedient, but I know I'm not all the way there. I know some areas I could do a little work in, Lisa, like, how do I know? Okay, so there's several, several signs and indicators in our lives of disobedience, but the number one, The number one that I have seen like snatch people's edges and force them to start moving with a crazy sense of urgency is when circumstances become unbearable. When it's just like cancer, we all have cancer in our bodies. Cancer are free radicals, right? It's these like rogue cells in our body that are scouring our body looking for a match, right? So these rogue cells called free radicals in our body. And so I know I've heard people say like if they get cancer or if somebody they know or love get cancer, they'll say language like it came out of nowhere. Like if they like she was just 
fine on Monday. And then on Tuesday, boom. I'm like, that's not typically how like cancer develops over time. Like cancer is a buildup of free radicals, right? These cells that have lost an electron and they have multiplied so much that now they are the size of a mass that a machine at your doctor's office can detect. That's exactly how obedience works. Like first, there's just small indicators of disobedience in your life, right? You start letting stuff slide in your relationship that you guys should have addressed and talked about early on so it doesn't turn into resentment, but you don't. Again, you know, you don't feel good. You don't feel your best. You're like, hmm, what's these random headaches or what's these stomach issues I get every now and then? Oh, well, they come and go pretty quickly. So I'll just continue with, with business as usual, right? Like, hmm, I know my impulse buying is getting a little out of control or I'm not really saving or investing like I should, but you know, the money's coming in and we're going to keep the party going, right? And what happens? Those free radicals, i.e. those small circumstances, multiply, multiply, they compound and you look up and you're diagnosed with cancer. Your marriage is diagnosed as pre-divorce. Your health is diagnosed as pre-diabetic. Your, your career, you're on the verge of depression or anxiety. Now you're emotionally eating because food is the only thing that makes you happy because where you go 40 hours a week is, is so unbearable now that you got to get joy out of alcohol or drugs or food or impulse buying or gossiping on social media because you don't have anything fulfilling your spirit and your soul the way God intended. You have been disobedient for so long that the circumstance has become so unbearable. And now you putting pressure on all of us to get out of this situation as quickly as possible. I was talking to somebody recently And that's really all I got for y'all today. So I'm about to hop off. (laughs) Okay. I just need y'all to know y'all disobedient and it's getting out of control. But I was talking to somebody recently. She was talking about her sugar addiction, right? And she's like, I got this sugar addiction and I don't know like why I can't abstain, like why I can't practice self-control. Like I'm such a sugar addict. And I'm like, well, you know, first of all, it's a, it's an intentional physiological thing. Like addiction is engineered into food that they have chemists and scientists who are in the lab intentionally engineering addiction into the food. So part of it, small percentage of it, it's not your fault, right? When we are addicted to substances, you know, a small percentage of it was designed that way. Addiction was designed that way, right? And so, you know, I told her that's not your fault, but the overwhelming majority of it, you know, the, the behavioral, the behavioral aspect of it, like the physiological aspect of it, You never saw that coming, right? You didn't know they were setting you up for addiction, but the behavioral part of it and the loss of self-control, that is is all you, right? And she was like, it's funny because I had weight loss surgery. And she said, when I had weight loss surgery, I was able to stop eating and drinking certain things that they told me to to heal from the surgery. And she said, she said, I can do it. She said this line, y'all. And I imagine a lot of you guys can resonate with this line. She said, I can do it when I have to. (laughs) (laughs) I chuckled on the inside. She said, I can do it. I can do it when I have to. I said, you can do it when you, when you have to. And that's what clued me into the way some of us think. I said, I'm like, how don't, how doesn't she see her circumstances right now as she has to like why post-surgery does it feel like, okay, I absolutely cannot eat this mess. But now, you know, years after her surgery, and she's battling an addiction and she has other the, these other milder health issues going on. Why doesn't she see that as she has to, right? And I imagine that's a lot of you. Like if I needed to give up my coffee, if I needed to give up my sugar, if I absolutely need to give up my dairy because I'm taking a med, I see y'all do this if like, like y'all taking medication, like oh, I can't drink, I'm on antibiotics. Like, oh, okay. But when you drink and when you're not on antibiotics, it causes you to have headaches. It causes weight gain. It causes lethargy. It causes chronic fatigue. Why isn't that a I have to circumstance? 
Like, why is feeling that type of bad not bad enough for us to stop putting crap in our body? Why is feeling that type of bad not bad enough for us to finally do the personal development work that's required for us to launch our project or write our book or do the thing? Like, why is that type of bad not bad enough for us to have the hard conversations with our loved ones so that we can mend relationships before they're completely destroyed. Just like, I'm just wondering like, why is that bad not bad enough? I didn't understand this sentence. I can do it when I have to. I'm like, you're on the other end of the phone with me telling me that something has to change and you need help in your health. Isn't this an I have to situation? Right? The number one signal of disobedience is unbearable. If your situation have reached an unbearable state, you have been disobedient for a long time. Hey, hey, podcast listeners. It is your favorite plant-based health and business coach, Lisa A. Smith, here to tell you all about our next masterclass. So last month in September, we officially kicked off the run-up to our next 30-day vegan salt, oil, and sugar-free challenge. And I went deep about how to combat chronic stress. Listen, if you missed that masterclass, you missed an absolute treat. One attendee said, it was all so good. So many takeaways and tools you can apply immediately. You've been giving away gems for free. Thank you. And then another attendee said, thank you so much. This was amazing on point and I resonated with all of it. I'm going to work on my exit strategy and then write down what beliefs are preventing me from taking action. Listen, if you aren't in my master classes, what are you doing with your health life, okay? So I'm here to tell you about the next one so you don't make the same mistake twice. I am teaching another master class coming up on Wednesday, October 23rd, 6.30 p.m. EST, and you need to be in the room because this one is gonna be all about nutrition, and mindset. So I opened up a QA and a in our private Facebook group for the challenge. And I asked you guys, what do you want to learn about? And you guys replied with all of your questions. So on Wednesday, October 23rd, I'm going to be doing a live Q&A answering any and all of your questions about what to expect for our next 30-day vegan salt oil and sugar-free challenge, how you should be moving so that you can be successful. Some of the questions that have been submitted are things like, how do I cook without oil? How do I get my protein if I'm not eating meat? And here's one of my favorite ones. Someone says, let's talk about self-sabotage. Yes, you guys are asking all the right questions and I'm bringing all of the answers. So listen, this masterclass is complimentary. All you have to do to get in the Zoom room is make sure you're registered for our 30-day vegan salt, oil, and sugar-free challenge. If you're already registered, you don't have to do anything. You will automatically receive the Zoom link. If not, click the link in the show notes Get registered for our 30-day vegan SOS free challenge and you will get the invitation to our next masterclass coming up live with me. It is not a recording. It is really me in the room teaching and acting up. (laughs) So you will be invited to that masterclass on October 23rd with our live Q&A where I'm going to be answering all of your questions about nutrition, exercise, lifestyle, and things like self-sabotage and mindset. So make sure you click the link in the show notes, get registered for the challenge, and I will see you soon. So I want to help those of you who maybe are not at a place of unbearable yet. Let me tell you what typically precedes unbearable so you guys can, can know what's coming right after where you are right now. A lot of you are in this place. Some of you are in certain areas in your life. You're in unbearable right now. It might be in you know your relationships with your family, your friends, your kids, your mate. It might be in your finances. It might be in your career. A lot of y'all hate y'all job and God bless you. A lot of y'all hate what y'all do for a living and y'all still not creating and executing an exit strategy. It is beyond me. So a lot of you guys are in a place of unbearable, but there's some of you guys who are listening to me who you're not at a state of unbearable yet, but let me tell you where you are so you can have language for it so that you'll know that you still should be acting with a sense of urgency. The thing that precedes unbearable is three words, not that bad. Yeah. Just raise your hand, just privately where you are. No, we can't see you. Just raise your hand. Because if it's not optimal, what most of you guys say is, I'm not that bad. And you guys go a step further. You look left and you look right and you compare yourself to other people. Like I got weight to lose, but I'm not that bad. Like they said I might be pre-something or they said 
but I'm not that bad. And because you're not that bad, it's not unbearable in what you keep doing. Business as usual. Here's here's the other thing y'all say. I like my job. I just can't stand the people. It's not that bad. <laughs> y'all not that bad people is the most, da- not that bad is almost more dangerous to being unbearable because at least when stuff is unbearable, there's a sense of urgency in your spirit. You like it hurt too much. Like when I get out of bed every day, it hurts too much. Like when I look over at this person and I want to strangle, like it hurts too much. Like it's unbearable. At least when it's unbearable, y'all do put pen to pad. Y'all do put fingertips to keyboard and start looking for out. Like when you're not that bad, you like black plant-based coach who be fly (laughs) and go live every Monday. How much she charge? You know what I'm saying? At least when you unbearable, you do start looking for solutions. But those of you who are not optimal, but you're not that bad. Y'all are in the worst circumstance. I'm telling you right now, if you are in a situation in any area of your life where it's not unbearable and it's not that bad, but it's not a 12 out of 10, you, you are in that gray area where you're like about to be unbearable, but you still kind of can deal with it for a little longer if you had to. That's the worst place to be. That's the worst place to be. When people are in my coaching programs and they're like, I mean, I do pretty good. I don't eat that bad. <laughs> I'm like, oh, you on your way. You on your way, baby girl. <laughs> you on your way, my guy. <laughs> so that's what I need you guys to understand. I need you guys to understand when you're on the road to becoming unbearable and then you uh, achieve that unbearable state. And now you have a sense of urgency that feels unsatiable because you've been disobedient for so long. When I was talking to our students yesterday in class, this was the conversation we were talking about. One of our students left her nine to five to pursue her passion project. And she's like, I'm getting to a point where my project needs to take off a little more or else I'm going to be forced to go back to my nine to five. And I said, does the thought of going back to your nine to five, like, is that bearable for you? Is that reasonable for you? Is that something that you could like, did you like it enough? Like, is it okay? Like, is it okay if this ends up like that? If this ends up like that, like you going back and she's like, no, I can't even. I said, okay then your obedience like needs to ramp up, like it needs to move a little quicker. And for her, and I imagine this is the same for a lot of you, what was standing in her way was personal development work that needed to be done. So if there's apprehension around the fear of rejection, if if you have a lack of mindset, if you have a, a messed up money mindset and you think like there's no money or nobody will pay me or I'm gonna go homeless if I go out on my own, right? That means you're thinking in lack, right? You don't see the world as an infinite universe with infinite possibilities, right? You see it as a limited space with limited space, with limited resources, right? That means you need to work on your money mindset. If you have issues with the fear of rejection, if you have issues with being the face of something, being responsible for something in people and being responsible for your ideas, that's an invitation to do personal development work. If you know that going back or staying in your current circumstance is unbearable or is approaching unbearable, then you have to do something. You have to do something fast. If you have been getting signals from your body and your mind that your health is slowly declining and you've been allowing it to do that and you've been just taking small baby steps towards becoming optimal, meaning you're just going to reduce the junk instead of giving it up completely. You're just going to start walking instead of actually start sweating. If you're like, I'm just going to do a little better so that I can be guilt-free about doing, not doing anything, but you know you're not doing enough. Like I need you to turn up. I need you to be radically obedient. That is complete surrender. Some of you guys are just being mediocre obedient, meaning you're doing some of the work so you won't have the guilt of doing none of the work, but you're not doing enough of the work for it to to make significant strides towards the goal. Let's get out of this gray. It's the gray areas that's killing us. Not that bad is a gray area. That's living your life in the middle. Like, why would you settle for not that bad? Why would you let good become the enemy of your great? Like, why would you settle for a relationship that doesn't like make you extremely happy like through the moon. Did you know you can be blissful in a friendship? You can be blissful in a relationship. You can be blissful in a marriage. You can be blissful in your career. You can be blissful in your relationship with God. Like you can be blissful. Like why y'all settling for good enough? Like why y'all settling? Like your health can be optimal. Like it, it doesn't have to be like, well, at least I'm only on one medication. Like why are you settling for gray? 
when great is available to you? Like, why are you selling for good when great is obtainable? Like it's reachable, like it's accessible. Like y'all need to start being radically obedient so that you can reach those levels in your life and those stages and those places that you once dreamed about. Like, don't go to your grave, not that bad. Like what? That's, I wish y'all would put that on my headstone. Like she didn't make history, but she wasn't that bad. <laughs> I slept. What? I'm out here trying to become a historical figure on y'all. What is y'all talking about? <laughs> she she wasn't the best coach, but she wasn't that bad. I wish y'all would. Okay. Everybody that leaves my presence, leaves my programs, has the pleasure of being my friend, has the pleasure of being my partner, has the pleasure of being my mother is going to say she was an excellent daughter. My friend is going to say she was an excellent friend. My clients are going to say she was an excellent coach. My partner is going to say she was an excellent wife. Like my, like I'm leaving excellence on everything that I touch. <laughs> Why would I? Nobody is going to say she wasn't the best, but at least she wasn't that bad. I could have had worse. No, 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 no. Every organization is, was going to say she was the best speaker we've ever had. What are y'all doing? I'm so radically obedient in everything that I show up in. I aim to please. Y'all not aiming to please. Y'all just aiming not to fail. <laughs> you got to aim to please. Like I want to leave everybody. Like she helped little old ladies across the sh street. So she wasn't that bad. Can we say she was an optimal contribution to earth? Eh. <laughs> you feel me? <laughs> you feel me? She held doors for people and helped little ladies across the street. She won. I mean, she ain't that memorable, but she wasn't that bad. What is y'all doing? Like, no, get out of your own way and do the work that you're avoiding. Don't let your good become the enemy of your great. And don't let your circumstances become unbearable because you are so in love with disobedience. Like do the hard work. You got to go through the cravings. It's going to hurt a little bit. It's going to be some withdrawals. Yeah. It is. It is. It's going to be uncomfortable. It is. You're going to put yourself out there. You might even have a little embarrassment. It is. Y'all should see my first videos. You should hear my first. I ran up on my very first podcast episode a couple months back. My first podcast episode was back in 2016. And I was like, ooh, <laughs> you sound crazy. <laughs> it's going to be cr like you're going to create some cringe worthy mess when you first start off because you knew you're just new. Right. And it is what it is, but you have to go through those stages to grow into excellence. And so if you're not out here with a spirit of excellence in your health, in your career, in your relationships, in your money, in your faith, in your health, right, then you should just go back to sleep. Like if you ain't wake up with a spirit of excellence, just go back to sleep. Every day I need you to check in. Did I wake up with a spirit of excellence today? Because I'm about to get this water in, this workout in, these plants in, these fruits in. I'm about to spend time with the people I love. You know what I mean? Like I'm about to be vulnerable when I need to. I'm going to raise my hand and ask for help in this program that I joined. I'm not going to just sit back and say I joined it and I get the result that I signed up for. Like everything is about to be excellent and that's possible. And so I'm just here to apply pressure. Okay. So unbearable, unbearable is typically the prerequisite for disobedience. And the prerequisite for unbearable is not optimal, but they're not that bad. So you've settled in like the seat is warm at this point. Like you settled in because it's not that bad. Like, yeah, I would love to do something different, but it's not that bad. I would love to live somewhere different, but this is not that bad. Move, you're not a tree, <laughs> okay? If this is not optimal for you, get the heck out of the situation. Get the heck out of the circumstance. Show up with a spirit of excellence every single day. Wake up with a spirit of excellence every single day or go back to sleep. That's it. And that's all. Let me tell you, for those of you who are at a place in your health right now where you know you are not optimal, but you're not that bad, or it has become unbearable for you and something has to change, I need you guys to sign up for our 30-day vegan salt, oil, and sugar-free challenge. I don't know how many of y'all done did challenges before, but I just, I just want to believe that the plant protocol 30 day vegan salt oil and sugar free challenge is in the 1% of challenges. Like we in the, we one percenters over here because we start prep and we start working with our challengers months before we actually kick off the challenge. So our challenge starts January 1st, 2025. So this is my invitation to you to move out of a state of disobedience, to move out of a state of unbearable, to get out of a state of not that bad and move toward excellence, move towards optimal, move towards a 12 out of 10, okay? So that's lisaangelsmith.com forward slash challenge. 
lisaangelsmith.com forward slash challenge. Get registered for our next 30 day vegan challenge. So I checked last night and we were at like 390 something people registered so far. Our last one, I need y'all to help me out because we're going to beat our last numbers. Our last numbers, we had 700 people registered. So now until January, between now and January 1st, y'all, we got to get at least, I want to double that. Like I want 1,500 people to come get this health with me, okay? And so this challenge is free. We will have VIP tickets. So you will, if you're like me and you like front row me, please, okay? I need VIP wherever I go then we will have VIP tickets for those of you who want to increase your proximity and get some extra perks. We'll talk about that at our October masterclass. LisaAngelSmith.com forward slash challenge. Love y'all. I really appreciate that. Get registered if you love to get yelled at by me. If not, thanks for stopping by. It's been real because what I'm not going to do is stop yelling. You know, it's so crazy during our last challenge. Uh... We did a review form at the end of the challenge. Like, you know, what do you like? What didn't you like? What should we change? Because y'all, y'all know me and God is besties, right? And so one of our last challengers, she commented <laughs> on the review form, make it less spiritual. I'm like, girl, find another challenge. <laughs> you think, oh, you want me to just leave God at home? Oh, okay. You sound wild. <laughs> That's called disobedience, boo-boo. <laughs> I will never and I will not. <laughs> make it less spiritual, girl. Find another vegan challenge. I ain't the only one out there. I'm just the best one out there. You feel me? You can go somewhere where it's not that bad. <laughs> And so anyway, that's it. And that's all. I will see you guys back here. We'll be back on our thing talking. I will never not include my God in everything I do because he includes me in all that he does. What is we doing? Talking about making it less spiritual. Girl, you want me to stop talking about God during my challenge? You sound wild. What? That's who I'm being radically obedient to. Goofy. Anyway, so thanks for stopping by if that's not your flavor. Like if you don't like being yelled at, If you're not here for God, it's okay. Just go find another challenge. We're not the only one out there. We're just the best one out there. And you know how many people are willing to settle for less than the best because it costs a little less? A lot of them. Great value toilet paper sales too. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like we all know that, right? So it is what it is. That's why there's options. That's why there's options. There's always a low ticket option. And when I ain't talking about price, I'm talking about energy. (laughs) I'm talking about vibration. There's always a low ticket price. So just go to the low vibration challenge. It's all right. Look at me. Look at me throwing shade. Let me get out of here. Y'all got me acting up. Let me tell y'all, our 30-day vegan challenge, our VIP ticket holders, our ultra VIP ticket holders, they get a private coaching session with us, right? Before the challenge to really prep them so we can get a better understanding of what their needs are. So our VIP ticket holders and our 30-day vegan challenge get a private one-on-one coaching session with us. And when I tell you, I was like, I was upending people's challenges in 20 minutes in this coach. The coaching session is 30 minutes. Within 20 minutes, I had people in tears. I'm like, oh, at least your coaching skills, ah, you know what I'm saying? Upgrade me. I'm like, I'm getting better year after year. And I don't, I'm not saying making you cry is my goal. I'm just saying <laughs> by the end of that 30 minute call, we have worked through some issues. So if you're trying to be a part of a challenge that's really going to change your life, then this 30 day vegan challenge is for you. Like we are whole food plant based. We are not going to be eating vegan junk food. We are not going to invite you to moderation. And I will be talking about God. And it ain't going to be accidentally like, oops, it's going to be on purpose. So if you're not for it, it's okay. It's okay. Just go somewhere else, okay? So I'm willing to take less, a smaller amount of people. I'm not so for the numbers that I'm willing to edit myself or edit my values. And so that's what you need to know, okay? Okay. It's been real. I will see you guys next Monday. Thank you for staying on with me for a little bit of the shenanigans. Bye, y'all. You tuned in today because like me, you refuse to let your good become the enemy of your great. You're not settling for good health when optimal is well within reach. If you're ready to go from good to great, Visit LisaAngelSmith.com to learn more about our plant-based health coaching program, Firm to Table, and our plant-based business accelerator and coaching certification. But before you go, if you enjoyed what you heard today, please consider rating and reviewing this podcast. Until next time, remember, radical obedience is still undefeated. Stay obedient.